friends welcome to Tarunayas today we will be discussing daily current affairs of 1st of December 2022 so let's start with the first news of the day the first news is about digital rupee now re recently the Reserve Bank of India had announced the launch of the first pilot for the retail digital rupee on 1st of December 2022 Eight banks have been identified for the phase-wise participation in this pilot project. The first phase will begin with four banks that includes SBI, ICICI Bank, Yes Bank and IDFC First Bank in four cities across the country. So four banks have been identified in four cities across the country in order to begin this pilot project of, this is not uh, black corals, in order to start the pilot project of digital rupee. Four more banks including the Bank of Baroda, Union Bank of India, HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank will join this pilot project subsequently. So four banks in the starting and four more banks subsequently are going to start participating in this pilot project. The pilot would initially cover four cities which includes the Mum which includes Mumbai, New Delhi, Bengaluru, Bhubaneswar and it is later extended. It would be later extended to the cities of Ahmedabad, Gangtok, Guwahati, Hyderabad, Indore, Kochi, Lucknow, Patna and Shimla. The scope the scope of the pilot it may be expanded gradually to include more banks and users and locations as per the need and the pilot would cover selected locations in a closed user group that will comprise of the participating customers and the merchants digital rupee would be in the form of a digital token that would represent the legal tender so basically this digital rupee is a central it's a central bank currency all right and it will be issued in the form of token which will be a legal tender all right so these are few keywords that we need to uh, we need to remember and we need to be clear of now how it will it is going to be transacted now transaction can be both person to person and person to merchant payment to merchant can be made using qr code which are displayed at the merchant's location right and the digital rupee and the digital rupee would offer both uh, offer features of physical cash trust safety and settlement finality as in the case of cash it will not earn any interest and it can be converted to other forms of money like deposits with banks it will not earn any interest so this is another important point that we need to remember that digital rupee it is not going to there will be no interest paid on digital rupee now what happens and it can also be converted to other forms of money like deposit with banks now generally what happens when we deposit our cash with uh, with banks especially in the saving banks account savings bank account the the bank pays some sort of interest on this saving it can it ranges from 6% to 8% or right, depending upon the bank but however here in this digital rupee no interest will be paid the pilot will test the robustness of the entire process of digital rupee creation creation distribution and retail usage in real time let's move on to the next news the next news of the day is about the shiveluk volcano now the shiveluk volcano is located on the kamchatka peninsula in the russian far east region and it has shown increased activity and is now considered as a as danger because of erupting violently now the shiveluk volcano it is one of the largest and the most active volcanoes in the kamchatka peninsula which have erupted almost uh, 60 times in the past 10000 years now where is this kamchatka peninsula located if you look at this the map of russia so this is the far east region of russia here we have the Bering Strait, Bering Strait, sorry, and here we have the U, we have USA, the Alaska state of USA, right? So this portion, which is extended, which is extended, this portion is known as the Kamchatka Peninsula. All right. Now this is home to some twenty-nine active volcanoes, and this is part of the 
ring of ring of fire all right so we know that there are certain locations on uh, on earth which are which shows most active volcano and they form a ring especially around the pacific ocean and this is known as the ring of fire which circles the pacific ocean and it is prone to eruptions and frequent earthquake due to the volcanic activity now shivaluk volcano it has two parts it has two main parts the old shivaluk volcano and a young shivaluk volcano which is smaller that is 2800 meter peak that protrudes from its side all right so you look at uh, here in the picture so there are two uh, parts of shivaluk volcano so there is the there is old and there is young we know that mostly uh, the old mountains the old world mountains they have they show lesser volcanic activity right because of the inactivity and in their core region all right so the young shivaluk lies within an ancient caldera caldera which is a large crater like basin that likely formed the older part underwent a catastrophic eruption approximately 10000 years ago so caldera looks like this all right so this is how the caldera looks like and there used to be a peak let's say there used to be a peak here and now this is how the caldera looks like now this peak it might have collapsed within the core sometimes a crater lake is also formed when it gets filled with water so it is this part that has become extremely active the lava dome continues to grow and that stronger fumarole activity has been observed the next news of the day is about the shakti policy the shakti scheme for harnessing and allocating koila transparently in india all right so why this has been in news because of the ministry of power that has recently launched the scheme for procurement of aggregate power of 4500 megawatt for 5 years under the shakti policy ministry of power is going to procure the power of uh, 4500 megawatt for 5 years under this policy now what is this shakti policy the scheme will help the states that are facing the shortage and help generation plant to increase their capacity the power uh, the finance corporation pfc is power finance corporation which is a uh, cpsu Consulting Limited has been designated as the nodal agency. It has invited bids for the supply of 4,500 megawatt of electricity. The utilities that have shown interest for the scheme are Gujarat Urja Vikas Nigam Limited, Maharashtra State Electricity Distribution Company Limited, Madhya Pradesh Power Management Company Limited, New Delhi Municipal Corporation, and Tamil Nadu Generation and Distribution Corporation Limited. so these are the utilities that have shown interest in this scheme now it is for the first time that bidding is being carried out under the under the shakti scheme the shakti scheme for harnessing and allocating koila transparently in india it was launched in the year 2018 and it aimed to provide coal to stress power unit which lacked the coal supply so basically the scheme aim at providing aim it aim at providing the seamless supply of seamless supply of coal all right now let us talk about the heat waves the next news of the day is heat waves now why this was in news because recently a world bank report 60 160 to 200 million indians could be exposed to the lethal heat waves annually according to the world report world bank report that was published in the uh, in the in the hindu newspaper of first of december all right so from 2 2030 million to 200 million people they can be exposed to the lethal heat waves in india every year and nearly 34 million indians will face job losses due to heat stress related productivity decline so by 2037 the demand for cooling is likely to be eight times more than the current level as per the world bank report according to the report the climate investment opportunities in india's cooling sector this could happen 
This could open an investment opportunity of 1.6 trillion dollar by 2040 besides reducing greenhouse gas emissions significantly and creating 3.7 million jobs right so according to this report it can open an investment opportunity and what amount of investment opportunity it is going to open 1.6 trillion by 2040 So, with the demand for cooling shooting up, there will be a demand for new air, new air conditioner every fifteen second, according to the report, and which is expected to rise, which is which and and the report said that this leading to an expected rise of the greenhouse gas emission by four thirty five percentage over the next two decades, and then there is a need to shift to more more energy efficient pathway that could lead to reduction in the expected carbon dioxide levels. The report had also proposed a road map to support New Delhi's India Cooling Action Plan. Now, India became the first country in the year two thousand nineteen to basically to basically come up with India Cooling Action Plan through a new investment in three major sectors: that is, building construction, designing buildings energy efficiently, and that does and that also does not produces heat waves, cold chains, and refrigerants. All right. so a heat wave is basically a period of abnormally high temperature a common which is which is a common phenomena that is seen during the month of may june and in some rare cases it can even extend to the month of july so according to indian india meteorological department classifies heat waves according to regions and their temperature ranges so as per the imd the number of heat waves in india has increased from 430 Over nineteen eighty one to nineteen ninety to six hundred over two thousand eleven to two thousand twenty. So these this is the mercurial meter according to which uh, the heat waves and cold waves are designated. So for a heat wave, there has to be a four point five degree Celsius to six point four degree Celsius above normal maximum temperature. That is based on the departure from normal temperature. When severe when we speak of severe heat waves, it's basically rise. of more than 6.4 degrees celsius above the normal temperature all right so severe heat waves it equal or greater than the 47 degrees celsius and here the criteria for cold waves are given so based on departure from the from the normal so cold wave will be called as decrease of temperature by 4.5 degrees celsius to 6.5 6.4 degrees celsius and based on the actual minimum temperature a cold wave will be called if there is a minimum if the minimum temperature is 4 degrees celsius or lower than that and severe cold wave will be a minimum temperature of 2 degrees celsius or lower than 2 degrees celsius so these are the criteria which are used by the by imd to de designate heat waves and and cold waves all right now let us move on to the let us move on to the dhamma deepa international buddhist university this was in news because the chief monk of the world buddhist pope association of south korea is going to whose name is sakya gasan is going to lay the foundation stone for the international buddhist university at manubakul in sabrum district of south tripura on november 29 right he laid actually So now in India we have this university that is Dhamma Deepa International Buddhist University. So this university is expected to become the first Buddhist run university in India to offer Buddhist education along with courses in other discipline of modern education as well. The university will basically set a precedent in history of Indian Buddhism in promoting and reviving Buddhist culture in India that is the birthplace of Buddhism. According to Dhamma Deepa International Buddhist University it will be the first Buddhist university in India to be headed by Buddhist monastics and run and monitored by Buddhas Buddhists the word dhamma deepa describes both the core principle and the guiding force which seeks to which seeks the light of dharma its international scope and measures the university is going to contribute to the highest level of knowledge and education in India and also The university hopes to better engage the contemporary world through the insight and depth of the Buddhist words. At the same time, it is keen to prepare student and youth with knowledge and skills so that they can live healthy, peaceful and contented lives and they should be able to lead the life, lead the way of life. 
so in this university students from 31 countries will get a chance to study as well as carry out research on buddhist literature culture and tradition in the proposed various city so that's it for today thank you so much for watching tarun ayas if you would like to download the pdf you can go to the telegram channel link will be given in the description below